One of the biggest hurdles people face when considering switching to an electric vehicle is a range anxiety, the fear of running out of juice before you reach your destination. But just how much of that is a concern in 2024? In one of my most recent videos you might have missed, right in the middle of that video there is a bit where I compare a Havel Jolien's 1000km petrol range to the BYD Atto 3's 345km battery range, and why those numbers really shouldn't matter when it comes to everyday driving. I feel that little bit deserves to be explained further in its own video, and that's what I'm going to do today, in this episode of Beyond EV, your home for everything BYD. Hi everyone, David here from Beyond EV and in this video I wanted to give you my take on how to handle EV range anxiety and I'm hoping this video will be particularly helpful for those who are in the market and considering an EV or have never bought an EV before uh, and even for those who have never had EVs on their radar simply because of range concerns um, and straight up there isn't some government or political agenda here that I'm trying to push to make you buy an EV, not at all. Uh, this is just an opinion from someone who didn't really care whether I bought and drove a petrol car or an EV, but did end up taking the leap and buying an EV to use as my daily driver. Now, first up, for whatever reason, when I read car brochures, just to go through what each different car has to offer, when it comes to petrol cars, you, ever re you very rarely ever see a range estimation on a petrol car. You only ever see it on battery cars. Now, this goes for hybrids as well. When you read through the brochures, you'll get the battery range estimation but rarely ever the petrol range estimation for the petrol side of things why is that is it because driving requirements are different and it's difficult to determine for each individual or is it because the range of an internal combustion car is so great that it's just a neg negligible spec in the selling process or is it because there's just petrol stations everywhere so it doesn't really matter whatever the reason is the fact remains it's rarely ever discussed and if it is it's barely a footnote but when it comes to battery electric vehicles electric range in an ev is one of the main buying criteria when you read a car brochure the range of that battery is put up in a banner in big bold letters and everyone wants to know what the range is and i assume that's because the charging infrastructure that we have right now is not mature enough and no one wants to be stuck with a low battery out in the charging dead zone it is true EVs do have their fallbacks and they're not for everyone's use case. And until charging infrastructure catches up, it's always going to be the back on everyone's minds. But where EVs should be considered the number one choice for buyers is in particular for city-based drivers where they are primarily using their car to drive to work, drive to school, drive to the shops, drive to the gym, drive to a friend's place. Those types of applications, that is the absolute best use case to buy an EV for. But instead of discussing all of this again, I'm just going to show you a clip from a previous video I did where I explained the range difference between the Havel Jolion and the BYD Atto 3 and how we need to change our mindset when it comes to range. Now, I just want to take a quick break here and explain something about the massive range difference between the Atto 3 and the Havel Jolion. Range is one of the biggest hurdles that new buyers face when it comes to taking the leap and buying an EV. But the reason it's a hurdle is because we need to change our mindset when it comes to an EV's range, and we need to take into account how it's being fueled. It is the natural human response to see 311 kilometers range and automatically think, wow, that is pretty poor. I have to go to the petrol station every three days. Why would I buy this car? Which would be a valid point if it was a normal internal combustion engine car but the Addo 3 isn't. It's an EV and the vast majority of owners charge their car at home overnight while they sleep. When reading into an EV's range, you need to think this way a little bit. When I leave home in my car, how many kilometers will I cover in my car before I have to come home again? If you think you will travel less than 300 kilometers from the time you leave home to the time you'll next be back home, owning an EV will not be a problem for you, which let's face it, is basically everyone except for a few outliers. Your home is your fuel station with an EV. So as long as you know you'll be back home to sleep before you go over 300 kilometers in your car, you will never run out of charge. Now, of course, this all changes on long trips and you'll have to stop more often to charge. But how often are we actually doing long trips? 
If we take a look back over the last 12 months and count how many times we do 300 kilometer plus long trips, if it's less than say three or four, I think it'll be perfectly fine to own the Addo 3 standard range. If it's more, then yes, I actually think a higher capacity EV, say the Addo 3 extended range version, would be a more suitable option. But for now, let's get back to the comparison. Great, so you've taken that mindset on board. So I guess the next question is, why should I limit myself? It's great that I can charge at home every night, but when I do need to get over 300 kilometers and I need to find a charging station for it, why should I limit myself to having to do that? And the answer is easy, money. It's the amount of money you're gonna save by driving an EV for 95% of your requirements. The Jolion, look, let's put this side by side. The Jolion, it's gonna cost you 10 cents per kilometer to drive. If you just wanna drive up to the shops and back, that's gonna cost you $1 to just do that. If you do that and then drive to work, drop the kids off at school, yada, 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 it's gonna cost you $5 a day to run that car. Now, if you do that five days a week for a month, it's gonna cost you about $100 a month to run the Havel Jolion. Do that $100 a month for 12 months and you've just spent $1,200 on petrol to run that Havel Jolion every year. Now, if you compare that to other ICE cars, that's actually pretty cheap. I used to drive a Ford Falcon and I spent over $3,000 a year to operate that. But when you compare that to a BYD Addo 3 EV, and in particular, if you have an eight cent overnight electricity tariff, that car will only cost you one cent per kilometer to drive. Now, if you need to do that same quick drive to the shops, that's only gonna cost you 10 cents. If you do that and then drive to work, drop the kids off, it's only gonna cost you 50 cents a day. Do that five days a week and you've just spent $10 in a month to do all of your driving. Do that for 12 months, and you've only spent $120 in electricity to run that car for an entire year. $120 of electricity versus $1,200 in petrol over 12 months. You can run a BYD Addo 3 for 12 months for what it costs for just one tack of petrol in the Havel Jolion. We are in the middle of a cost of living crisis in the moment, and this is one very important point that needs more attention. Yes, the purchase cost of an EV maybe that of uh maybe more of that than an equivalent petrol car but with the way battery tech is going in cars today you will have no issues buying an ev and then running and operating that ev for 10 to 20 years the car itself will fall apart well before the battery does and as i mentioned in another video i'm a value guy i value value and i don't like overspending on things and the amount of money you will save running an ev over driving an ice vehicle in my opinion, more outweighs the reduced range that you get from a charge, which after you own it, you won't even notice after you've started charging at home. Now, I know not everyone can charge at home. For some people, ICE is the only practical way to go. But those of you who are homeowners and can install a seven kilowatt charger, an EV makes a whole lot of sense for daily driving and you will never worry about range for 95% of your driving. So that's all I pretty much wanted to cover in this video, um, but I'm keen to hear your concerns and thoughts. So if you have any and you're considering making the switch and have some concerns, please let me know down in the comments. I'm sure either myself or the community would be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this type of content, please give the video a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. That's it for now. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.